Hi, good morning, safety chair and members of the safety committee. I appreciate this opportunity today to uh, update you and the public on the incidents that occurred over the weekend and give you the updates related to that. So what I have here is a synopsis of everything. Um, I will go through all of uh, everything I have and then we will respond to any questions afterwards. So late Saturday, we received an email from Cincinnati and it, the messaging was a takeover scheduled in Cleveland. There was a post that they had located by a group called Cincy Takeovers. And from that, it talked inviting members from Cincinnati and Columbus to come to Cleveland to partake in this event. Part of the post identified, it says, we will not run from a cop. If you can't stand your ground, this isn't your meat, the meat for you, none of future meats either. Make sure you aren't driving like, and then it was explicit, from spot to spot. We are all going to the same place, places. Spots will be dropped on the story. Do not blow up our DMs asking for the spots. So this was all through social media that these uh, communications were being posted. It says block the explicit cops until all sliders left the pit trying to go to the next location. Stay out of media's way. If you see someone with a camera, just back up and let them get their footage of us. So a big part of this is about capturing the, uh, getting the attention that they're looking for from the media and getting this out to social media. So the post listed as an you know, initial gathering location in Columbus. We received this information and we immediately began coordinating our resources and trying to gather additional information. We contacted Columbus PD. Uh, we identified to them a location we had that they would be potentially gathering. Columbus sent their resources to that location and no one showed up at that particular location. Our fusion center, along with the fusion center in Cincinnati, were gathering as much information as they could, along with our real-time crime center. We made notifications to the Ohio State Highway Patrol and other surrounding agencies and asked for them to monitor for any incoming traffic or large groups of vehicles traveling to the Cleveland area. We put together a detail of our officers uh, to monitor this activity. We also made notification to all of our five police districts to let them know to monitor any hotspot locations in their particular districts where we know that these gatherings sometime occur, and to also look out for uh, large groups of vehicles traveling into the area. Our chopper was up, also looking and monitoring for this activity. At approximately 11.30 p.m., was when we saw our first gathering in the area of East 55th and Woodland. Officers responded to that location. A short time later at 11.37 p.m., we were notified of an additional gathering at Lee and Miles. So as you see these locations as they popped up, they weren't going to just one particular location at a time. They were hitting multiple neighborhoods, multiple streets on different sides of the city, which does split up our resources when that happens. Uh, just, just after midnight, we were notified about an individual having an airsoft gun and shooting them at our officers. One of our officers was struck twice with an airsoft gun, but was not injured. Just after 1 a.m., we were notified about a group that was gathering in the second district uh, of West 65th and a second group in the area of West 25th and Lorraine. We received multiple calls from different areas in the city, most of those being in the second, third, and fourth district for groups taking over various intersections. The final area was I-90 West at West 14th, just around 4 a.m. There was about 20 vehicles on the freeway that were blocking all lanes of traffic, shooting off fireworks, attempting to light fires on the freeway, and pointing firearms at citizens who were confronting them. We gathered our resources on this final portion when the freeway was shut down with the assistance of the State Highway Patrol and other outside agencies. 
And what we had to weigh in in that factor was the location that they were at. There was no exit ramp between where we would enter and where we would get to that group. We had to make sure that we had a safe plan to get the officers up there and to get the citizens free from that area. When the officers were planning to enter the uh, on-ramp, State Highway Patrol was on the other side of the freeway monitoring and advised us that the group had dispersed. So at that point, all vehicles fled in different areas and the event ended for the evening. So throughout this incident, we saw fireworks that were being displayed, um, attempts to light fire throughout the city. Fortunately, the weather prevented that from happening. The airsoft guns, at one point, they were jumping on zone cars. Uh, firearms were displayed at the officers as well as citizens. The off-duty Parma officer was assaulted. Citizens were threatened. And of course, the activity of the spinning of the tires in the intersection that was being filmed. First, I want to thank our men and women for the outstanding work breaking up these meets. The biggest part of this is, you know, we're trying to stop the activity and the aftermath is the investigation. I also want to thank our partner agencies who came out to provide assistance for, to our men and women. Not everyone will understand our actions or the perception of inactions. I want to be clear that policing is not what you see on TV. Our members are faced with life and death situations that they are required to balance on what laws are being broken, what actions can they legally take, and what policy is in place for them to follow. To sit back and judge after the fact is easy. We look at the videos after the fact and can tell what they should have done what they could have done better, but to be faced with this head on in real time is extremely challenging. Every action or inaction taken by police will always be judged, not only by their superiors, by the media, by the community, and also we have to answer to the DOJ monitors, CPC, and even city council. We by far are not perfect but we do our best to balance community safety and officer safety. And as for opinions on how this should be handled, we must balance how we constitutionally, within our force guidelines, address these issues while protecting the community, participants, and officers. And I know that's a strong word about protecting the participants. Um, throughout the last few days, I've received numerous emails from the community. Some of those emails were, why didn't the officers shoot the individuals? Why didn't they ram their cars? Why didn't they do, you know, a lot of things that people, their perception is, is how we should handle it. But that is not what constitu constitutional policing is made up of. So currently, there are laws in the city addressing some of these violations. 43308 is about trick or stunt riding prohibited. And that right now is an M2 violation, which is a misdemeanor of the second degree. Another item is street racing prohibited, 43707. Now this is something that our officers have been writing citations for for the past two years. And uh, this is, identifies this particular behavior. Uh, House Bill 56 is effective later in October, which increases the penalties for these crimes. So not only are they the misdemeanors, but it also uh, gives the opportunity that there is license suspensions for 30 days to three years. So as we probably know that this is happening throughout the country and it's glorified on social media. There has been similar incidents in Indianapolis, September 14th through the 16th. And the situation in Indianapolis, lighter fluid, flu, lighter fluid filled bottles were thrown at responding officers and baseball bats were taken to their zone cars. In Philadelphia, uh, September 22nd, 
Baseball bats were used to destroy police cars as well. In those incidents, officers were hurt when responding to these incidents. What we have been doing is working on the smaller scale of the complaints that we've been receiving throughout the city with the smaller takeovers as we've been researching what are best practices, how are other cities handling similar situations, and what proactive measures we can take. One of the things that we have been looking at is something that Kansas City has done where they do street milling. And what they do with that is they mill portions of larger intersections to prevent this type of activity. And what it does is if there's some type of you know, stunt driving in that area, it would disable the vehicle because the tires couldn't take the impact of those, uh, the milling in the road. We're also working on you know, what we can do shorter term. Is it putting some type of obstruction, a metal plate, or something like that inside these intersections so that this activity might be deterred? Also, is using potentially police or larger city vehicles to block some of these locations. Uh, we've also had conversations with larger parking lot owners about some proactive measures that they can take when you look at where they gather for these locations when it's not on a city street, it's locations that have large unobstructed parking lots. And when I say unobstructed, there's no cart returns, there's no uh, parking blocks, there's nothing that stops this activity. We've made recommendations to several of those uh, parking lot owners to add something that would prevent this activity. Uh, going forward and what we have been doing is we do research social media. One of the things we do find are these sites are secured and locked to the participants. Uh, so the only measures that we have are open source available social media platforms. So that means that somebody would have to be, you know, they would not have to have a blocked site uh, for us to be able to review the activity or what they're posting out there. Uh, we've been responding actively to these uh, incidents throughout the city, especially on the smaller scale. We have currently put together, after this uh, weekend's incidents, a task force, which is part of our each police district, our traffic unit, fire arson, our gang impact unit, and several local partner agencies. The goal for this is to gather all of the investigations that we have and <coughs> compile shared data. Our hope is that as a whole community and not just the city of Cleveland, that we'll be able to you know, share this information and bring a bigger case against the participants in this. We need to make sure as a police, you know, as a division of police that we're better socializing what we do. And I know that that is, you know, one of the things that we always seem to miss the mark on in policing. You know, and it results in, you know, the perception of inaction. So I am committed to making sure the council and the community and the media are updated throughout this investigation so that you know of the work that we're doing, that you know when warrants are issued, and you know that this behavior is being addressed. Uh, just to talk a little bit about what happened the weekend prior in the area of West 25th and Lorraine, where a fire was lit and the cars were you know, actively taking over that intersection. We have issued warrants uh, for three individuals related to that. We identified them, uh, two adults and a juvenile. Where we are currently actively pursuing to arrest those individuals. Our goal is to hold all participants, those in the vehicles and those standing in the roadways who are filming it or just observing, responsible for these actions. These charges can range anywhere from a, a minor traffic offense all the way up to an, a, you know, a felony crime with this. As far as the takeover that occurred this past weekend, We've identified many persons of interest. Uh, we have to look at this case now as a bigger picture and look at how do we investigate this as a whole as opposed to the individual bad actors. 
So those are our next steps and you know, my commitment is to make sure that you are all updated on this so that you have a clear understanding that we are not doing, just sitting back and doing nothing with this. This is a priority for the Division of Police. This is a priority for the city and for the mayor. Thank you. And I thank you, Chief, for your um, broad explanation as to what um, you have uncovered and what you have determined took place. If you would just go back briefly mm -hmm. to the locations that we're aware of uh, where this took place, we had the first was East 55th in Euclid. I have a whole list for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and I wanted to make sure because um, second was Lee and Miles, mm -hmm. then we had West 65th, mm -hmm. then what after West 5th, 65th again? So I, I have to, the order may not be accurate yes. when I identify all the different locations yes. because we did, you know, I, we did receive approximately 100 different calls for service Saturday night. Okay. So the areas in the second district we identified were Scranton and Carter. Wait a minute. Okay, Scranton and Carter. Okay. West 25th and Lorraine. West 25th and Lorraine. Steelyard Commons. Wait a minute, Lorraine. The, uh, and that would be the parking lot? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. And of course, the final location was, which was the Interbelt Bridge. That's West 14th. Yeah, I-90 West to West 14th. Okay. And the third district, East 55th and Woodland. Okay, East 55th in Woodland, okay. East 105th and MLK. Wait Woodland. Okay, 105th and? Um, MLK. Okay. East 105th and Park, same area over there. Yes. Quincy and Opportunity Corridor. Okay. East 105th and Superior. And you can supply those to us. Yep, East 93rd and Opportunity Corridor. Yeah. And then going into the 4th District, 66th and Harvard. Kinsman and Opportunity Corridor, Lee and Harvard, East 122nd and Larchmere, East 93rd and Opportunity Corridor, 68th and Broadway. So it was much broader than we had originally um, been aware of. So you would please provide those locations to us. Just a couple other points. Um, the Fusion Center, um, you indicated you were given um, how well advanced, you mentioned um, the Cincinnati on social media, how much in advance notice did you actually have? Late Saturday afternoon. Late Saturday afternoon, okay. And at that point, um, obviously you, ha you didn't have the locations of where they were coming to, correct? No, yes, okay. Um, so at that point, late Saturday afternoon, then what actions were taken? You indicated you notified all five districts. So we received the notification, which, um, as I mentioned, was just something Cincinnati had located and shared yes. with us. Um, so we immediately had our fusion center and our real-time crime center, and our detectives start looking at this information to see if they can find anything additional. We made notifications to State Highway Patrol, okay. our partner agencies, our five police districts, and brought a detail in as well to cover um, this potential event. Okay. And as you know, it was raining. Yes. And you know, we didn't know is this a valid? You know, there's things that are posted continuously on social media. We didn't okay. know the validity of it. Um, and coming into it, kind of late into the game. You know, we took this serious and immediately took action. Was um, was this a, like a caravan? Was this an identifiable group coming up on, on 71? I can tell you we received no notification until they were here. So there was no one saw them coming. We didn't, we had no notification that they saw a large caravan of vehicles. One of the posts that they had made was advising each other to not drive erratically when they were going to okay. these locations. So if it's just everyday vehicle travel, you know, that's all they're seeing. Uh, one of the items I did um, omit was the fact that they do take their license plates off of their vehicles um, when these activities happen. 
so they will take the license plate over off prior to to make it harder to identify the vehicles involved yeah. uh, you indicated uh, you're looking at all avenues and all potential criminal acts um, one of the one of the reoccurring um, recommendations or from so many officers that have called me is the issue of aggravated riot is that being explored so I can tell you with um, yes absolutely a hundred percent that is okay. what we're looking at um, because it, it fits the definition of the crime and when we're going back to um, what occurred on West 25th that's aggravated arson that the warrants were issued for okay so aggravated riot and arson okay the go back to your the sections within the codified ordinance. You mentioned 437.07. What was the other section? 430, I'm sorry, 43307. 43307. And 43308. 43308. Okay. So those are the two sections. Uh, and your team is looking at the possibility of what we can do to enhance those. So there is currently a house bill that is enhancing the penalties yep, for yep. those crimes that Aware comes in that. later this month. Yeah, we have that. We have that information, and we're looking at that as well, because again, we know here we cannot increase penalties above the state. Correct. So that's something we're looking at as well. What we can do to mirror or augment what's taking place on the state level. So again, as I want to say, if there's any other areas that you think we need to collectively partner on enhancing uh, something that we've not had, never had to consider before, again, I would ask your team to take a look at that and make recommendations to us. We'll gladly immediately act upon those recommendations. Can and, I just yes. make one more? Uh, just based on your question about the aggravated rioting, yes. uh, that goes to the fact that this is more than a traffic events offense. When individuals decide to gather in large groups or coordinate large groups to create criminal activity and this type of behavior that's where your felony level crimes come from you know just doing this you know it's one thing with the street racing or the stunt trick driving that they're completing which might be just a traffic offense but when you're organizing it and you're doing all of these other things those are felonies you know, those are well beyond just, you know, having a little fun in the street. This is really serious crimes that are being committed. Okay. 